Running in the sand Living on the land The salty breeze was in our eyes We stood beneath the dragonflies and dance Hi guys, it's Nona from Nona Sheds and I'm here today to do a tutorial on how to make a do-it-yourself, make-it-at-home uh, version of Mod Podge. Now, one of the first things I want to say is I love Mod Podge. It is an excellent product. And it's a specialized product because it is a glue and a sealant. And they have formulated it to be so. Um, this that I'm showing you how to make today is an alternative to Mod Podge. It is not a replacement. Uh, if you want to make a permanent project, then you should get Mod Podge. But if you're working in your art journal, or if you're doing crafts with kids and need a lot of glue for a little money, then um, this that I'm showing you how to make today is perfect. <clears throat> uh, every crafter knows that Mod Podge is not, it's not super expensive, but it's not cheap uh, either. This bottle here is a little four ounce bottle and it can be five or six dollars depending on where you get it from for four ounces. And as you can see, or as you may can see, it's right there. I use a lot of it. And it goes longer than you would think it would, but it still doesn't last long enough for the amount of projects I do and the amount of money I have in my crafting budget, which is not much. Um, but you can make a version of Mod Podge using white glue, water, and a container. Now this white glue I got from the Dollar Tree. Uh, it's a school glue so it's washable. Uh, if possible you're going to want to use a non-washable glue. Um, and if possible, you're going to want to find an acid-free glue. Um, this one's not acid-free. But I'll explain why you need the acid-free glue um, later on. So, white glue, water, container. Now this container I also got from the dollar store. So it's a dollar. It's a 38 ounce container. What I really like about it is it has this wide opening. So when I'm working in my art journal, I can just dip my brush right in there and I don't have to worry about squeezing it out of the little bottle of Mod Podge. Um, so you don't have to actually buy a container. Anything will work as long as it has a lid. Old coffee jars, pickle jars, mayonnaise jars, even water bottles or soda bottles. Um, the only thing that really matters is that it's large enough to hold the quantity of your finished glue, which includes the water, and that it has a lid, uh, which is why I had to buy a jar. I could have used this one, but it came out of my recycling bin and I have already thrown the lid away, so that was not usable. Um, another thing you can use is baby food jars. I don't recommend uh, mixing it in that because that's not going to mix much. Um, you can mix it in that if you want. But the thing about the baby food jars, if you're making this uh, homemade Mod Podge to use for kids crafts, like a classroom environment or something, then you can mix it in the big container and you can pour it down into the individual containers for the individual kids. Um, but the recipe itself is really simple. Um, you, I found it in lots of different places online to make sure I was doing it right. Uh, it calls for equal amounts of glue and water. Uh, but for myself, seeing the finished product that other people have come up with, it looks way too thin. Um, I want it to be a little thicker. Like if you've ever used Mod Podge, you know that it flows easier than regular glue, but it's not super watery. So for today, I am using a 2 to 1 ratio. I'm using twice as much glue as I am water. And uh, if it comes out too thick, I can always add the extra water. The steps itself is really simple. Open your jar. Uh, if you're using a recycled jar from your home, you're going to want to make sure that you clean it out really good. You don't want pickle juice in your Mod Podge. 
you take your glue bottles and you're just going to take the lid off. Oh, look, it's got a thingy. Take the lid off, take the thingy out, and then you're just going to goosh that right there. the water and I'm going to attempt to get more of this glue out so what I'm going to do is pour the water in this glue bottle so I'm pouring two ounces in this one and I'll pour two ounces in this one and I just uh, don't want to waste any of the glue, which is the only reason I'm doing this. I'm going to shake those up. Try to get all the glue out of there that I can. Okay. I'm going to add the water to the glue in the jar. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to shake this one up. Get all the glue out of there. And this jar is holding a lot more glue than I thought it would, which is awesome. Um, so after you get your glue and your water into your jar, you're going to shake your big jar. You see, you have to mix that really well. So I'm going to stop this video while I do my shaking, and I will come back to show you the finished product and something I've made with it. Okay, so so this right here is the finished uh, homemade Mod Podge. As you can tell, it is a lot more liquidy than regular Mod Podge, and that worried me. Um, I did use it, and it uh, wrinkles a little bit more than regular Mod Podge, which is bothersome, but not unfixable. And here are two of my journal pages. Did I just glue down? This is a boo-boo where I uh, closed the book before the paint was dry. One of these pages was done with um, the regular Mod Podge, and one of them was done with the faux Mod Podge. Uh, this one I did with the one I made, and this one was done with regular Mod Podge. And then these two pages are all scraps of paper that were glued down with the foam on touch. So it does work and you can tell so far all my corners are sticking and only time will tell if they start to peel but I don't think they will. So homemade Mod Podge, craft with homemade Mod Podge, I'd say it's a win. <laughs>